were applying before, didn't it? Yes, it did. Un, deux, trois. Un, deux. Bienvenue. Merci. I think it seems to be working. So I've been taking French classes on, on Duolingo for the past year when, since the pandemic started, and I can still probably only say my name, but I'm trying. That's this morning. What a blessing. Is that better? No? Keep going. I'm just playing. Just keep going? Yeah. We got just a few announcements. We're collecting uh, school supplies for the Hardin County. It's being, uh, it's being run by the... Um, the nurses in um, Eldora, and so uh, it's to help children who don't have the proper started in the fall. So we're collecting items along with the other churches in Hardin County. You're good. Let me. I'm just going to make sure this is turned on up here. Maybe that's. Well, it's working. It just it's a little crackly, and I'm trying to figure out how to get the crackle out of it. The uh, other piece of business this morning, uh, this is the 33rd General Synod. I, it's all online this year. Um, I've probably already spent 30 hours. This day will be the last, uh, last day. It will be a full day um, this afternoon and into this evening. Um, as the United Church of Christ talks about what is important to um, our denomination and as they vote on uh, different resolutions, if you are curious in what some of the resolutions are, I'll be more than happy uh, to talk to you about those. Uh, some of them are um, different. Grief and chronic illness. We have felt alone and ignored. We have seen the depths of suffering. As we listen, we will be reminded of the hurt we have carried during these fragile days. Memories and regrets commingling in our chests. And as we listen, we will be reminded that our neighbors, our siblings in faith, also come to this space carrying burdens. So dust off our ears and stretch open the canvases of our hearts so that in our pain, we might lean into one another as we lean into you. Pull us close, O oh God. We are listening. Amen. Will you please join me in the call to worship? Here in this space, we wear our hearts on our sleeves. This space is a brave space. So come into this space with your hurt and your joy, your prayers and your dreams. All of God's children are welcome here. Let us worship holy God with authenticity and care.
often do we go below the surface? How often do we sit next to the same people week after week, oblivious to the things that they might be carrying? Family of faith, I believe God wants deeper connection for us than that. So God, listen now to our prayer of confession. I've been meaning to ask. Family of faith, we could all use some practice in asking where it hurts. Take a moment of silent prayer to think of the people in your world, in your lives, who may need you to reach out and ask. Give their names to God. You may do so in silence. Let us do that now. Joy is our child at heart. Jesus loves me. Yes. on underneath this dress. I just want you to know. <laughs> oh. Yes, I, I where, where does it hurt? Where's the bruise? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking that maybe this is a part of how Jesus healed people. Just by noticing people whose pain was ignored. I think Jesus the question if we had children up here. Them was what do you do when your friends and family are hurting? Just think about what you do when your friends or family are hurting. What do you do, Joy? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I I I usually just go and see them. I take them. I bake them buns. You know, I I write to them. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of listening. listening. Yes, I do a lot of listening. So here's another question. Ah, okay. You know, like she didn't know I was going to ask her these questions. The kids were supposed to answer these this morning. <laughs> yeah, so, um, like I think about this one man I see in Ames, and he walks around with a dress all the time. And I see him in coffee shops, and I saw him at High Bee the other day. And I should have talked to him, but I, I didn't, you know. It's hard. It is. It is hard. So, who can you tell? I think he's homeless. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Who can you tell when you're, when you're hurting, uh, either on the inside or on the outside? Who can you tell? I can tell you. I tell John. I tell my sisters. Who my great niece, Nora, told me the other night that she goes, you know, my grandma Miriam, I think she has like nine sisters. <laughs> <laughs> like to see others hurting help us not to ignore their pain or our own. Thank you for always noticing when we hurt and helping us heal. Amen. So family of faith, it does not take long to look around the world and point out places of pain. We've seen it with the pandemic. We've seen it with the floods. We've seen it with the droughts. This year has been so hard for so many, but I do not believe that pain will be the last word. Each week in our worship service, you're invited to give to the mission and ministry of this church. 
when you give, you're not only supporting this congregation, but you're offering care to the broader community, leaning in, asking the hard questions, choosing connection, choosing generosity. and our resources to be used for things that matter to you. Bless these gifts and multiply their use among us. Amen. Let us continue our worship in a time of prayer where we can listen to the beautiful birds sing, the, the glorious blue sky, all those things that God created for our well-being and enjoyment. Let us pray. Holy God, I know, I know that you hear us. You are the God of hospital rooms and graveside services. I know you must hear us today. So with open hearts and open palms, gracious God, we come to you with our joy and our pain. With joy, we give you thanks for all the blessings in our lives. We are thankful for this beautiful day. We thank you. And yet, in the same breath, we also carry pain. Like Hannah in the temple, who brought you her prayer. Like the hemorrhaging woman who pushed her way towards you in a crowd. We desperately need your ears, your, your healing touch. So today we lift up to you all the hurt and pain we carry for the things that weigh heavily on our community, for loss of job, for loss of loved one, for increasing natural disasters. We lift these things to you. Be among us, hold our hurt, Heal our wounds, draw us closer to one another and closer to you. We ask you at this moment to pour out a double portion of your spirit on this bread and cup so that these ordinary things might tether our hearts to you with the hope of people who dream. We pray together using the words your son taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And that, that's a part of the human condition, is to experience loss. We continue that motif this week, knowing that indeed we have all known pain and suffering. There is not one, not one of us here that as an adult or even a child has not experienced pain and suffering. It is a part of the human experience. We must first get curious about the pain others carry and the pain we carry ourselves. Before we can act, we must acknowledge and believe the pain is real for bearing witness to each other's pain helps us to cultivate compassion. Hannah's pain is ignored, dismissed, and mocked. Titled, Hannah Pours Her Heart Out to God. Here begins the scripture. There once was a man who lived in Ramathaim, 
He was descended from the old Zuf family in the Ephraim Hills. His name was Elkanah, and he was connected with the Zuths from Ephraim through his father Jeroham, his grandfather Elihu, and his great-grandfather Tohu. He had two wives. He passed a special meal to his wife Penina and all her children. But he also gave an especially generous helping to Hannah because he loved her so much and because God had not given her children. But her rival wife taunted her cruelly, rubbing it in and never letting forget that God had not given her children. This went on year after year. Every time she went to the sanctuary of God, she could not expect, or she could enter the sanctuary. The priest Eli was already at the entrance to God's temple in the customary seat and crushed in soul. Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably. And then she made a vow. O oh God of the angel armies, if you'll take a good hard look at my pain, and if you'll quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely unreservedly to you. I'll set him apart for a life of holy. And Hannah said, oh no, no, sir, please. I'm a woman that's brokenhearted. I haven't been drinking, not a drop of wine or beer. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring it out to God. Please don't for a minute think that I'm a bad woman. It's because it's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. And Eli answered her, go in peace. And may the God of Israel give you what you have asked of him. Think well of me and pray for me, she said, and went her way. Then she ate heartily, her face radiant. Hurting in silence, hiding our pain because we believe it to be shameful. Maybe we've been taught that certain reflections are not for polite company and we've learned the painful practice art of smiling through our platitudes. Maybe, maybe our pain has been invalidated or ignored so many times that we begin to believe there truly is something disgraceful about our feelings or, or experiences. Maybe it feels easier just to bury our emotions for fear or addiction. What would we say if someone stopped to ask us, where does it hurt? And acknowledge the validity, acknowledge the validity of our answers. Would we, like Hannah, be able to share our pain? with a humble and dignified honesty that trusts that there is no right or proper way to feel. Such honesty with our own hurts and disappointment allow us to be more present to others' afflictions as well. As we prepare to partner up with one another for our time of connection, curiosity, and courage, I want to remind you to listen closely to ask questions and be connected, really connected to the person who is sharing. And pray for her. Eli does not have to solve anything to be present. If we are ever to be people who bring peace and healing to a hurting world, we must be willing to pause and bear witness to pain to our, our own and to our others. So I'm going to invite um, Joy to help partner us up. I invite you to partner up with somebody who's not a family member. Um, and um, John, if you'll pass out the cards. And then we'll take about 12 minutes to, to uh, answer the cards. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, but really listen and...
don't think anybody cares. <laughs> To set my oh, 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 can we gather back together? I hope that your conversations were as beautiful and fulfilling as mine. It's all good. I uh, shared this two weeks ago, but I think it's important to share it again this morning. Reverend Granger Westberg wrote a little book entitled Good Grief. Westberg contended that grief can be good when four things come out of it. First, he says, grief is good when we come out of grief, ex the grief experience, at a learn how to use our spiritual muscles to climb the rugged mountain trails. And four, grief is good when we come out of it better able to help others. We have walked through the valley of grief we can understand. Like Hannah, with dignity and honesty, we can embrace our stories without shame, trusting that God is present and always listening. In turn, instead of shrinking away or delegitimizing, we can perceive and accept the pain of others. Like the God we follow, stand alongside those who suffer. God's word for the day is or sibling to be there for you. Blessed be the tie that binds us together to share each other's woes and burdens and for one another in Christian love. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be Blessed be the tie that binds. Will you join me in our affirmation of faith? On my best days, I believe they together over the three years that they had been together, and he had gathered them together at the table, knowing that they were going to experience a lot of grief and pain in the days ahead, and even Jesus knowing what was ahead for him. And he sympathized with them, as he sympathizes with us. But he gave us something to hold on to, and it's this blessed meal that reminds us that we are not alone. So on the night of his betrayal, Jesus took a loaf of bread in each other. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. This is the blood of Christ that has been shed for you. Siblings in Christ, take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this family of faith. We thank you that we can be vulnerable in front of you and with others because we know we are not alone. Thank you for reconciling and renewing and restoring our spirits with this meal. We ask a blessing on our family and friends, our church and community, and the entire world. Amen. The vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love, even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of the great connector, 
love itself. Go in peace. We will go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give